What is the most extreme object ever discovered? Not a mountain on Earth, not a hurricane on Jupiter, not a supernova tearing itself apart. No, those belong to the tiny world we inhabit. Step beyond Earth, and extreme becomes something else entirely. It becomes a scale measured in billions of suns, in the collapse of space, in forces so overwhelming that the laws of physics begin to stutter. Stars a thousand times larger than the sun, explosions brighter than whole galaxies, deadly beams of radiation sweeping through space like cosmic buzzsaws. But among all of these wonders, one object stands above the rest. A monster so heavy, so dense, so vast that it reshapes the fabric of reality. A creature with an appetite that knows no mercy. A place where time slows and space folds in on itself. A black hole. Yet even with all we know, and all we don't, a deeper question lurks beneath the surface. Do black holes have size limits? Is there a maximum size a black hole can reach? Or can they grow without end, swallowing stars, galaxies, and perhaps anything that dares to exist? It's one of the most mind-stretching questions in astrophysics. Not because we don't know anything, but because almost everything we know suggests both answers might be true. To understand how, we must climb the ladder of cosmic extremes from the tiny invisible black holes that may have formed seconds after the universe began to the giants that sit at the hearts of galaxies and finally to the hypothetical monstrosities that push the boundaries of imagination. But before we dive deeper, if you enjoy traveling with us into the strange, the beautiful and the impossible, consider subscribing. It helps us continue exploring the biggest questions the universe has to offer, and trust me, they will only get stranger from here. Now, let us begin at the beginning, with the smallest black holes the universe may have ever produced. When most people imagine a black hole, they picture something enormous, a collapsed star crushing itself into darkness. But some theories predict something far stranger, black holes so small that they could hide inside the space of an atom, yet weigh more than a mountain. These hypothetical objects are known as primordial black holes, and if they exist, they are among the oldest relics in the universe. To understand why, we must travel back 13.8 billion years to a universe that was small, hot, and violent. Everything, energy, matter, space itself, was compressed tighter than anything we can imagine. In that chaos, tiny fluctuations could have squeezed bits of matter together with such force that they collapsed into miniature black holes. Many would have evaporated over time. Some might have lasted. Some might be drifting through our galaxy right now, silent and invisible. These tiny black holes would defy everything we think we know about cosmic monsters. They do not form from stars. They do not live for trillions of years, and they may not behave like the giants we know. Yet hidden in their existence is our first size limit. A black hole cannot get smaller than the point where its own energy radiates away. This slow leakage, a kind of ghostly evaporation, means that black holes eventually fade. But this process is unbelievably slow. A star-sized black hole needs a number so large it barely qualifies as a number, a one followed by 67 zeros, to fully evaporate. Primordial black holes, if they still exist, would sit right on the edge of that limit. Small, but not too small. Old, but not eternal. They set our cosmic floor, a lower bound on how tiny a black hole can realistically be, but they are nothing compared to what comes next. If primordial black holes are the universe's tiniest monsters, then supermassive black holes are its titans. Nearly every large galaxy, including our own, contains one at its core. Ours is Sagittarius A, a dark giant four million times heavier than the Sun. But compared to other galaxies, it's modest. Some black holes weigh billions of suns. Their shadows could swallow our entire solar system without leaving a ripple. These giants do not simply sit still, they feed. They pull in gas clouds the size of solar systems. They shred stars like paper. They merge with other black holes in silent, invisible collisions that ripple through space. And as they consume, they grow. But how do they get so huge? There are three leading ideas. One, collapse of enormous early stars. In the early universe, some stars may have been hundreds of times heavier than anything we see today. 
When they died, their cores collapsed into black holes that became seeds for future giants. Two, merging over cosmic time. Galaxies collide, stars drift toward danger, black holes meet and merge, little becomes big, big becomes giant. Three, direct collapse from huge clouds of gas. Imagine a cloud of gas larger than millions of suns, collapsing not into stars, but directly into a single black hole. This would skip the entire star phase, creating monsters from day one. No matter how they begin, these giants shape galaxies. They influence how stars form. They regulate the growth of cosmic structures. They power the brightest objects in the universe, blinding beacons called quasars that shine with the energy of thousands of galaxies. But even these titans may not be the final word. Because at the far edge of cosmic possibility lies a question that keeps physicists awake at night. Can a black hole get too big? That mystery and the upper limits of cosmic monsters begins next. Before we go bigger, we must understand the boundary that makes a black hole a black hole, the event horizon. This is not a solid surface. It's not a wall. It's not a physical object. It is a threshold, the point where space is pulled inward faster than light can escape. Outside the event horizon, light can struggle uphill and maybe escape. Cross that boundary and escape becomes mathematically impossible. The size of this invisible sphere is directly tied to a black hole's mass. A black hole as massive as Earth would be the size of a peanut. A black hole as massive as the Sun would be about six kilometers across. A black hole with a billion solar masses would be wider than our entire solar system. This scaling matters because it hints at something profound. A black hole's size grows linearly with its mass. Double the mass, double the radius. So in theory, the more a black hole eats, the bigger its boundary becomes. And since there's no physical barrier preventing it from growing, could a black hole expand forever? This is where the laws of physics start pushing back. Black holes don't grow by magic. They grow by accretion, the slow, violent process of pulling in matter. Matter doesn't fall straight in. It spirals, forming a glowing disk heated to millions of degrees. This disk becomes brighter than entire galaxies. But here's the twist. The very process of feeding creates radiation, and radiation pushes outward. Light exerts pressure, lots of it. If a black hole tries to consume matter too quickly, the outgoing radiation fights the incoming gas. This creates a natural braking system called the Eddington limit. This limit doesn't stop a black hole from growing, but it stops it from growing too fast. A black hole can grow by steady, long-term feeding, by swallowing stars whole, by merging with other black holes, by collapsing enormous gas clouds. But each method comes with a built-in limit. You can only eat as fast as physics lets you, so black holes can grow enormous, but they cannot grow arbitrarily fast. However, fast is one thing, forever is another. Supermassive black holes are not the end of the story. Theoretical models predict something even larger. Ultramassive black holes. These monsters weigh tens of billions of suns. The largest currently known is Ton 618, around 66 billion solar masses. Its event horizon could engulf our solar system 20 times over. Yet even Ton 618 may be small compared to what nature could create. Let's imagine something truly extreme enormous gas clouds in the early universe. If they collapse directly into black holes, they could become colossal from birth. Or, a chain reaction of mergers galaxies merge constantly throughout cosmic history. Every merger pairs their central black holes like dueling titans. Sometimes they combine, sometimes they sling each other across space like cosmic slingshots. But over billions of years, the winners grow into giants, and the giants can become monsters. So far, nature has created black holes in the tens of billions of solar masses. But what about the hundreds of billions or trillions? Is there a maximum? That leads us to one of the strangest ideas in astrophysics. Imagine a star so massive that the usual rules don't apply. A star with millions of solar masses. A star so huge that instead of shining, 
it begins collapsing under its own gravity faster than nuclear fusion can save it. This hypothetical object is called a quasi-star. It is a cosmic matryoshka doll, a black hole at the center, surrounded by a bloated supergiant star, powered by the black hole feeding inside it. The outer layers act like insulation, letting the internal black hole gorge itself far above the normal feeding limits. Inside a quasi-star, the baby black hole grows at a terrifying rate. If quasi-stars existed, and many astrophysicists think they did, they could have produced black holes with hundreds of thousands of solar masses almost overnight. These giants could then continue growing into the titanic supermassive black holes we see in the early universe. Quasi-stars show something important. There are exotic pathways that allow black holes to grow much faster than should be possible. Nature is clever, and it likes to break the rules we think it follows. But even quasi-stars cannot create infinite growth. For the true upper limit, we need to explore what happens when black holes become too big for the universe around them. We finally arrive at the main question. Is there a maximum size for a black hole? The answer is both yes and no. No, there's no strict physical law saying stop here. Nothing in general relativity prevents a black hole from continuing to grow. Yes, the universe itself imposes practical limits. Here are the major ones. 1. The supply limit black holes can only grow if there's enough matter around them. Most regions of space are empty, unbelievably empty. A runaway, infinitely growing black hole would need a constant cosmic buffet. The universe doesn't provide that. 2. The time limit. There is only so much time in cosmic history for black holes to grow. A black hole with trillions of solar masses would need longer than the age of the universe to form. 3. The expansion limit. Space is expanding. Distant matter is moving away faster than gravity can pull it in. This means there is a cosmic speed limit on how far a black hole can reach. This defines a hard boundary. A black hole cannot grow larger than the matter it can gravitationally access. The expansion of space eventually outruns its hunger. So what's the actual maximum size? Current models suggest the absolute upper limit for a black hole today is around 100 billion solar masses. Beyond that, the universe expands too quickly and the feeding supply becomes too sparse. Could black holes in the far future grow larger? Possibly, but even then, trillions of solar masses seem wildly unlikely. The universe simply doesn't provide enough fuel. Here is a fascinating twist. Some black holes may grow faster than their own galaxies, even while obeying the Eddington limit. This happens when they sit in extremely dense early universe regions. They receive streams of cold gas. They undergo frequent mergers. This creates temporary situations where black holes balloon faster than their surroundings. This may explain why we find billion solar mass black holes only 700 million years after the Big Bang. That's absurd. That shouldn't be possible. Yet, there they are. And they challenge every assumption about black hole growth. We've talked about how big black holes can get. But what about the opposite? Can black holes shrink? Yes, through a slow ghostly process called Hawking radiation. Black holes radiate tiny amounts of energy. As they do, they lose mass. Small black holes evaporate fast. Large black holes evaporate slowly, very slowly. A supermassive black hole would take one followed by 99 zero years to evaporate. That is a number so large that the mind cannot hold on to it. Eventually, even the largest black holes will fade. In the far, far, far future, long after stars have died, galaxies have vanished and the universe is cold and dark, the last black hole will release a final flicker of light and disappear. This is the true lower limit of size. Black holes are not eternal, they die. Black holes may determine the ultimate fate of the universe. As stars exhaust their fuel and galaxies drift apart, black holes will become the dominant structures of the cosmos. Over trillions of years, stars fall into them. Orbits decay, galaxies collide, matter becomes scarce. Eventually, all matter that can be eaten will be eaten. 
Black holes will grow. Then the universe will grow cold. Then black holes begin their slow evaporation. In the end, the universe may be nothing more than a thin haze of particles and radiation, the final whispers of once cosmic giants. It is poetic and terrifying and beautiful. So, do black holes have size limits? Here is the clearest answer we can give. There is no hard theoretical limit, but there are strong practical limits. Black holes cannot grow forever because the universe expands too quickly, matter is too sparse, time is too short, radiation limits feeding cosmic structures collapse and disperse. Nature provides opportunities for black holes to grow enormous, but not infinite. The largest black holes we've found are likely close to the maximum size the cosmos allows. And somewhere out there in a distant galaxy, or perhaps one we have yet to discover, lurks the biggest black hole the universe will ever create. A silent colossus, a titan made of darkness, a monster that bends reality itself. A reminder that even in a universe of billions of galaxies, some things remain beyond comprehension, but we can keep searching and every discovery pulls the horizon of understanding just a little farther outward.